So here's what I put together with these uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. So I have a pack of eight cells in parallel, four in series, and that will do my 12 volts. So these, as I indicated before, they're used cells which have uh, deteriorated quite a bit. I've tested them to be anywhere from between 1.6 in 1.9 amp hours. Um, so I've used a site called repacker.com to configure this to have a consistent total capacity between each group of cells. Now I didn't show uh, how I actually put it together. These are just uh, glued together using glue gun. Um, I'll, once these are all soldered together and I will uh, be wrapping them so it'll hold it all together anyways. To put these together, I'm using these. Uh, these are loops that I had created uh, in previous packs. Uh, they're a little bit too long, but they're, they'll do just fine for the application. So what I'll have to do here is I'll solder um, connections to each of these uh, uh, copper wire. Uh, and I'll do another one over here. And on the other side, I'll have to put one between these two groups of cells and that, that'll complete the, the creation of the pack. So now I'll go ahead and uh, put a drop of solder in every of the cells so that I can connect it to these, uh, I guess, bus bars. And as I've showed in previous videos, I'll use these resistors to be able to do the connection. Now these cells are capable of much higher current capacity, but in the application that we'll be using, uh, it, they'll be more than sufficient for, for the application. So I had a lot of difficulty soldering these connections. Um, I'm thinking maybe because these are probably a little dirty. They were in use for a long time. Um, I know the, the cell itself will soak up the heat, so it's probably the primary issue, but I'm trying to go ahead and, and grinding, grinding down the terminals to clean them up and see if that helps. So that seems to work a lot better. Okay, so this first side is done. Go ahead and flip it over. Now I have to do the same thing, but only in the middle here. This will be my pack positive, and this will be my pack negative. Now on this side, you have to be very careful because these two. If I bridge any of these batteries, it'll actually do a sort of circuit because I've already soldered the bus bar on the back side. So I have to be a little more cautious when working. Okay, so now I should be able to read 13 volts from one terminal to the other. That works. Last step is to put, connect these batteries together and it'll be complete. Now I just go around and check, make sure that none of the connections, that all the connections are good. The pack is now complete, uh, including balance leads that I installed 
and have connected to the meter. You can see here it's indicating only about 20% capacity and the reason for that is that the Nissan LEAF, uh, once it fully charges the battery, it allows the voltage to get on a little over 13 volts, which is not ideal. That means that I'm not going to be using the full capacity of this pack. But unfortunately, that is the voltage that the uh, LEAF delivers to the 12 volt battery. Now I have it connected to a, um, a tester here, or a load tester, and we'll find out what is the pack capacity um, based on the voltage that it'll see in the Nissan LEAF. So, so we'll use about 5 amps. The test has finished and we have obtained only a 4.34 4 amp hour, which is a lot less than I was hoping for. But the, as you can see the voltage has gone back up to 10.9 volts. So I'm guessing there's still a little bit of more capacity left in the pack. So at this point, it sh might be enough to start the car up. If you look over here at the meter, we have uh, more in balance, but it's still within spec. It's not, uh, not that far off. So this pack is built. I think uh, we might as well just test it out. Let's put it in the car and find out how it works. Here's the battery pack that I've wrapped in uh, shrink wrap. So I've got the terminal here for connecting it to the power and I've got the balance leads here. So let's first uh, take the old 12 volt battery out. So I've already loosened this terminal and this is the negative. Take it off. And we'll disconnect the positive by taking it off here. Now I'll start by installing these leads that I have with the built-in fuse. Now on the negative side, I'm going to keep this connected because there are there are other wires that are connected here. So probably sensors or connections for something else. Okay, let's, let's put a lithium ion pack in here. Now as soon as I connect this, the car will become live. So this is a positive and there is a, a slight danger of it touching the frame. So I'll probably be, be tie wrapping this up so it can't fall. But leaving the terminals uh, available, I, I could uh, boost it if ever this battery went bad. This side is a negative terminal, so it's not as important. Now I'll, I'll put this in line, just to be able to see what happens. So let's connect this here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I have 11.7 volts. And now we'll connect the car up. So you heard the car clicking. So 
So it's currently consuming about 13 watts. Now down to seven, seven watts. So now I'm gonna plug the car in. You can hear the car stop charging. The lights are now flashing. And we have 13 volts. So it's not registering any current because uh, the meter is designed to to, uh, to to count the current going from the battery to a load. And the car is now charging the this uh, lithium ion battery. So everything seems to be working fine. We'll let that go for a while and see what happens to the uh, voltage. So the car has been charging for a few minutes now and I have the terminals tie wrapped to here so they can't really fall over. Now I've got a balancer plugged into it and as you can see there's about 15 millivolts of imbalance. Now it's kind of strange because it the, the voltage seems to be bouncing but I guess maybe that's how the DC to DC converter uh, works. It pulse charges the, the battery. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, we'll leave this in the car for a little while and then we'll find out how it works. So obviously having a BMS would, would be preferable but I'll be running it this way for a little while and I'll periodically be testing the balance of the cells using an ISDT BG8S. So I needed to do a little update to this video. As you can see here, I connected uh, my negative lead to the connection here, but uh, what I didn't realize is that actually it bypasses the current sensor. It actually connects directly to the negative cable. And so it's very important that uh, all the current coming and going from the battery uh, is, is, is monitored by the current sensor. So I'll have to remove it from here and make a connection on this side. So now having the connection over here, all the current going to or from the battery will be sensed by the current sensor. And if I look at uh, my meter, it does seem to be working properly now. The voltage doesn't seem to be bouncing anymore. So for anybody wanting to do a similar modification to the vehicle, make sure on the negative terminal that you make a connection on this side and not over here. Thanks for watching. Until next time.